Welcome to Echo 414 Study Session 1 Nature of Auditing Introduction One of the most far-reaching consequences of the Industrial Revolution was the introduction of the Limited Liability Company which led to the formal split between ownership that is principal and control agent and its associated agency problems. The need to check the activities of the agent, that is management, which was entrusted with the property of another person, the principal, led to the development of audit. In this lecture, we shall examine the nature, evolution, merit and objectives of audit. Objective. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the meaning of and the need for audit, the development and the objectives of audit, nature of audit firms and its relationship with accounting. Nature of audit. The formal definition given by an audit by the United Kingdom Auditing Practices Committee, now known as the Audit Practice Board, is the independent examination of and expression of opinion on the financial statements of an enterprise by another appointed auditor in pursuance of that appointment and in compliance with any relevant statutory obligation. An audit has many different purposes and can be performed on different processes with the desired outcome being the expression of an opinion at the end of the process. A common audit is the audit of an opinion as to whether the financial report gives a true and fair view of financial statements, which involves the auditor providing agents fairly in all material respects in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. The term audit is derived from the Latin verb adieu, which means to hear. The origin of audit dated back to the ancient times when the landowners allowed tenant farmers to work on their land while the landowners themselves did not become involved in the business of farming. The landlords then relied upon an overseer who listened to the accounts of stewardship given by the tenants. In the contemporary times, however, an audit has been defined as an independent examination of the records and financial statements of any organization or business whether profits oriented or not, and irrespective of its size or legal form. Such an examination is usually conducted with a view to expressing an opinion. Evolution of audit. The managers are expected to prepare an account, which is quantitative statement stating how the shareholders resources were utilized during a period being referred to as accounting year. This statement is referred to as stewardship account. In order to make the owners of the business place reliance on members of management as regard the true and fair view of the financial statement, the shareholders will appoint an auditor. Auditing as a profession arose primarily because of separation in the ownership as well as the administration of a business enterprise. The owners of a business that is shareholders pull their resources together for the purpose of establishing an enterprise with a common goal of profit making or otherwise. These shareholders may not be available for the day-to-day -day administration of the company, hence the need to appoint professional managers whose main responsibility is to utilize the shareholders fund effectively. Thus, auditing may be seen to have arisen primarily as a result of separation of ownership from control. However, this does not connote that independent examination of financial statements may not be necessary where there is a fusion of ownership with control. Based on the aforementioned, major actors in companies audit are 1. Directors, that is management. 2. The statutory auditor. 3. Shareholders.
this relationship between the auditors and the shareholders on the one hand and the auditors and the directors on the other hand should be constantly borne in mind during the audit even though the auditor is constantly brought into contact with the directors who conduct the business he is not acting for them at all he is appointed to act as a check upon the directors and to report to the shareholders who are the proprietors of the company on the true and fair view of the accounts. The introduction of the joint stock company increased the supply of capital for industry and commerce. The small privately owned businesses which was financed by a sole trader or a partnership gave way to the form of organization now familiar as the limited company. The body of shareholders delegated some of their members to act as board of directors and periodically the board submitted accounts to the shareholders so that they could be aware of the state of affairs of the enterprise in which they had an interest. It was therefore necessary for the shareholders to be satisfied that the accounts presented by the directors did provide an objective view of the state of affairs of the company. The Joint Stock Company Act of 1844 was the first legislation in Britain to require all incorporated businesses to have their own annual financial statements examined by an auditor. Pioneer auditors were in many cases non-accountants who were required to state whether the accounts showed a true and correct view of the state of affairs of the company. It was the Companies Act 1900 that required the auditor to be independent and it was not until 1948 Companies Act that it was required to be professionally qualified. Whether the financial statements give a true and fair view or equivalent of the entity's affairs at the period end and of its profit and loss or income and expenditure for the period then ended and have been properly prepared in accordance with the applicable reporting framework for example relevant legislation and applicable accounting standards or where statutory or other specific requirements prescribe the term whether the financial statements present fairly. In undertaking a modern audit of financial statements, auditors should carry out procedures designed to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in accordance with auditing standards contained in statements of accounting standards to determine with reasonable confidence whether the financial statements are free of material misstatement. Evaluate the overall presentation of the financial statements in order to ascertain whether they have been prepared in accordance with relevant legislation and accounting standards and issue a report containing a clear expression of the opinion on the financial statements. Later developments introduced the right to examine the books and records and to obtain all the information and explanation necessary for giving a report on the truth and correctness of the company's balance sheet. Between the two world wars, greater emphasis was placed on the informational value of the company's balance sheet and prospective investors became increasingly conscious of the need for credible financial information. Responsibility for the detection of error and fraud was regarded as the province of company management. A major development in company law was the Companies Act 1990 as amended which provided as follows a the requirements of a professional qualification by the auditor b independence c the presentation annually of a report and law statement and balance sheet and a report as to be provided by the auditor on the reliability of both statements d the eighth schedule of the act laid down detailed disclosure requirements in order to give shareholders the necessary information about company affairs. e. The auditor's rights and duties were defined. His reporting duties 
clearly emphasized a change in auditor objectives away from detection of fraud and error. Instead, the auditor was required to give an expert opinion on the quality of published information, that is, whether the directors had kept proper records of accounts, whether such accounts agreed with books and records, whether returns from branches not visited were adequate for the purpose of the audit, and whether its profit and loss account and the financial statements were presented in a form which complied with statutory requirements. Need for audit. It is often argued that since the financial statement prepared by the management of an enterprise may actually not present the financial position of the organization, there is therefore a need for audit. Some of the reasons for an independent professional opinion on the financial statement will include the following the separation of ownership from management and the need to safeguard the interests of the owners who do not participate in the day-to-day -day decision of the organization. The Company and Allied Matters Act, Karma 1990, provides that every company shall at each annual general meeting, AGM, appoint an auditor or auditors to audit the financial statement of the company. To provide credibility on reports and accounts prepared by directors which may contain errors, not disclose fraud, be unintentionally misleading, be deliberately misleading, fail to conform to regulations, not disclose relevant information. Objectives of Auditing The Auditing Practices Board states the objective of an audit of financial statements is to enable the auditor to express an opinion whether the financial statements are prepared in all material respects in accordance with an applicable financial reporting framework. The phrases used to express an auditor's opinion are give a true and fair view or present fairly in all material respects which are equivalent terms. The applicable financial reporting framework comprises those requirements of accounting standards, laws and regulations applicable to the entity in determining the form and content of its financial statements. In Nigeria, the primary objective of an audit under Karma 1990 is for an appointed auditor to express a professional opinion on the financial position of an enterprise as contained in the financial statement prepared by the management so that any person reading and using them can have faith in them. Other secondary objectives include to prevent fraud and errors, to prevent any form of irregularity, to evaluate the effectiveness or otherwise of the internal control systems within the enterprise to assist the management in the establishment of effective auditing system, to advise on financial matters for efficient decision making by management, to ascertain and ensure that an enterprise conforms to statutory and professional requirements. Relationship between auditing and accounting. An audit has been defined as an independent examination on the financial statements of an entity or business organization. Accounting, on the other hand, is the measuring, recording, and reporting of the financial transactions and statements of affairs of an organization to the interested group of people. The reporting aspect of accounting is usually done by means of financial statements produced annually by companies and which usually take the form of annual reports and accounts. Accounting comes before auditing. The financial activities of a business must have been summarized, classified and recorded in the books of accounts and reported by means of financial accounts before auditing can take place. It is the books of accounts that the auditor has to verify so as to ensure that the final accounts prepared are in agreement with the transactions that occurred 
during the financial period. The responsibilities for accounting, that is, preparation of the financial statements, maintenance of adequate accounting records, internal controls, selection and application of accounting policies and safeguard of the organization assets rest with the management, while the responsibility for forming and expressing an opinion on the financial statement rests with the auditor. An auditor cannot and must not write up the books of an account for his client or prepare the final account as part of his normal audit assignments. Where the auditor is called upon to write up the books of account, then it should be understood that he is doing an accounting work and the service should be billed separately since it is not part of the audit assignment. Likewise, the provision of other services like taxation, management consultancy, business advisory, secretarial services, and so on, are not part of the audit and should be negotiated and billed separately. Whenever auditor is performing other services to the same organization, he should be sure that such other assignment is not in conflict with his audit assignment. Merits of auditing. Auditing serves as a deterrent to fraudulent staff within an enterprise. During amalgamation or acquisition, audited financial statement serves as a basis of determining the net worth of a business for the purpose of ascertaining the purchase consideration of the business to be acquired or amalgamated with. Audited financial statement can be used to negotiate bank loan. A financial statement examined independently by an auditor will be readily accepted by the tax authority for the purpose of taxation. Audited financial statement serves as a basis for measuring performances by the investors. Audited account is one of the requirements of the Nigeria Stock Exchange for a business that is willing to be listed in the Nigerian stock market. Users of audited statement. Traditionally, the annual financial statement of companies are produced by the directors to the shareholders and other people who are expected to be interested in them. However, today, a much wider range of people are interested in the annual reports and accounts of companies. The following people or groups of people are likely to desire to see and use financial statements for one purpose or the other. Actual or potential, such as owner or shareholder. Take two. A. Actual or potential, such as owner or shareholders, lenders or debenture holders, employees, customers and suppliers. B. People who advise the above, including accountants, stockbrokers, credit rating agencies, financial analysts, trade unions, statisticians. C. Competitors and people interested in mergers, amalgamation and takeovers. D. The government, including the tax authorities, departments concerned with price control, consumer protection, and control and regulation of business. E. The public, including those who are interested in consumer protection, environmental protection, and political and other pressure groups. Other services provided by professional accountants in practice. Professional accountants in public practice are usually referred to as auditors and their businesses as audit firms. Other range of services provided for clients by professional accounting firms include the following. Accountancy services, taxation services, share registration services, management consultancy services, financial consultancy services, investigations, liquidation and receivership, trusteeship, miscellaneous services. Summary. Auditing as a profession arose primarily because of separation in the ownership as well as the administration of a business enterprise. The Company and Allied Matters Act, Kama, 1990, 
provides that every company shall at each annual general meeting appoint an auditor or auditors to audit the financial statement of the company. The main purpose of audit is to express a professional opinion on the financial position of an enterprise as contained in the financial statement prepared by the management so that any person reading and using them can rely on them. Prevention of fraud and errors is just one of the secondary objectives. This is the end of study session one. Thank you.